pleasant day to all of you. This is the second part of Chapter 6, Organizational Factors and New Product Development in Large Firms. Kanina, pinag-usapan natin yung data or information na kailangan ng mga uh, businessmen para makapag-generate sila ng idea kung anong negosyo or kung anong product ang kanilang introduce sa market. Paano ba nila makukuha or paano sila magkakaroon ng sapat na informasyon na makakatulong sa pag-generate ng ideas? So, in surveys or in statistics, there are four data collection techniques. Those are, one is observation, two is surveys or two questionnaires, three is by interviews, and four is by focus groups. The first data collection technique is through observation. It allows the study of a situation's dynamics, including the frequencies and other behaviors written in the material of the observation. Quantitative and qualitative information can be generated using this method. And how effective is observation? Observation is an effective method because it is straightforward and efficient. It doesn't typically require extensive training on the part of the data collector and he or she is generally not dependent on other participants. So ito yung nakikita mo lang yung iyong target market o yung galaw ng mga tao through direct observations which are also recorded in field notes or on a mobile device if the observer is collecting data electronically. The next one is through surveys and questionnaires. Surveys and questionnaires are popular means of data collection because they are inexpensive and can provide a broad perspective. It can be conducted face-to-face -face or by mail, uh, by telephone or by internet. So ngayon, usong-uso na yung mga Google Form. Then surveys are often used when information is sought from a large number of people or on a wide range of topics. Mas madali siyang i-facilitate. So sabi nga, this makes it easier to analyze the findings because answers can be represented by assigning numerical values. The third one is interview. Interviews are possible to do by conducting personal interviews or phone calls. Questions are straightforward and promote answers that are open-ended. Dito, pwede kang magtanong-tanong sa target customers or client kung ano ang needs ng mga tao na hindi pa nasasagutan or ibig sabihin ko konti pa lang yung may ganong product or services. So, through interviews, makukuha mo yung information. And number four is by focus groups. This is a social interview for people with similarities. It gathers combined group data. They produce the same kind of data as in-person interactions, but they add a social component and provide a better understanding of why a people talk or behaves in a particular manner. Dito naman, mag identify ka ng isang group na meron silang something in common na po pwedeng mag-provide sa iyo ng data na po pwedeng makatulong sa iyong negosyo. But this session can be time-consuming and difficult and a require or requires a leader who is skilled at creating a relaxed, welcoming environment, drawing out passive participants, and even dealing with conflict. So, dito kailangan talaga ng expertise ng isang leader para makuha niya yung information na kailangan niya. But if you're going to conduct a research or a feasibility study uh, related to your business, there is also the purposive sampling. Purposive sampling is a technique of non-probability sampling in which a researcher sub subjectively chooses his sample size to participate in his or her research. 
ibig sabihin, yung researcher or yung taong nagkoconduct ng feasibility study, siya na yung mag-identify ng kanyang mga respondents. There are advantages of purposive sampling. Number one is one of the most cost-effective and time-efficient sampling techniques available is purposive sampling. So, hindi siya matagal gawin dahil agad pipiliin na ng researcher kung sino yung mga respondents niya. Number two, if there is only a small number of primary data sources that can contribute to the analysis, purposeful sampling may be the only suitable method available. So, kung maliit lang na source of data ang kailangan mo, so pwede na itong purposive sampling. This technique can be useful in investigating anthropological circumstances in which an intuitive approach can benefit from the exploration of meaning. Ano ba itong tinatawag na investigating anthropological circumstances? So, kung ang isang researcher ay gustong tingnan ang galaw o ang culture, o ang behavior ng isang community. So, ito yung uh, purposive sampling is very effective. Kasi yun yun, yung anthropological circumstances. Halimbawa, dito sa Nueva Ecija, gusto mong magtayo ng isang negosyo. Titingnan mo kung ano yung galaw ng tao, yung social life nila, kung hanggang anong oras ba sila gising, uh, may nightlife ba ang mga tao sa Nueva Ecija, ano ba ang pinagpupunan ng kabuhayan? So, yun, yung mga bagay na yun ang kailangang malaman. Okay? But also, there are disadvantages of purposive sampling. Number one is the vulnerability by a researcher to errors in judgment. So, ibig sabihin, pwede kang magkamali. Bakit? Kasi pinili mo lang yung respondents mo. Sometimes, nagiging subjective ang researcher sa pagpili ng respondents dahil Kumbaga, meron na kaagad stigma na ang kanyang pinili ay yung talagang sasagot ng positive dun sa kanyang mga tanong. Now, next one is low reliability level and high bias level. So, ito yung katulad din na sinabi ko nung kanina na vulnerability by a researcher to errors in judgment. Kasi nga ay uh, personally pick lang yung kanyang respondents. This part gave us some insights on various tools in gathering data which serve as deciding factors in producing new products and introducing it to the market. Thank you very much.